Hi folks, this is Calc 3, Quiz 8. We're given a function of three variables, and we're given x, y, and z as functions of three new variables. We're asked to find and simplify an expression for f theta in terms of rho theta and or phi. So this is a chain rule problem, and once again, for the chain rule problems, the tree is the key. So let's look at the tree of dependence. We start off with big F, and at the first level, he depends on X, Y, and Z. So that's the first level variables we have there. But now X, Y, and Z depend on variables rho, phi, and theta. Hopefully you recognize these as spherical coordinates, unless you're a chemist, in which you won't, because uh, you don't use rho and phi. Anyway x depends on rho, phi, and theta. So there's rho, phi, and theta. y depends on rho, phi, and theta as well. But z just depends on rho and phi. So there's that. I'm looking for an expression for f theta. That's the partial derivative of f with respect to theta. And so I look and see where is theta showing up? He's showing up here and here. So how do I go from f to theta? I go through x and I go through y. So I'm just going to ignore the z part. So we can start off with our chain rule. f theta equals fx x theta plus fy y theta. Now it's just a matter of working all this out. Uh, let's find the fx, partial derivative with respect to x, fy, partial derivative with respect to y. Let's look at x theta. Here's x, the partial derivative with respect to theta, the rho sine phi are treated as constants. Take the derivative of cosine of theta, I'm going to get negative sine of theta. So I'll put that down and put the negative there. And then I look at the y theta. Here's the y. Rho and theta are, rho and phi rather, are constant. So I get a rho sine phi. And then I take the derivative of sine theta and get cosine theta. Alright, so I'll go back over here. F theta equals. 2x times negative rho sine phi sine theta plus 2y times rho sine phi cosine theta. Now, I want to find f theta in terms of rho phi and or theta, so now I need to make substitutions then for x and y. So what am I going to have here? When I substitute in the x, I'm going to get rho sine phi cosine theta. I already have a rho sine phi, so I'm going to have a negative 2 rho squared sine squared phi sine theta cosine theta. When I substitute this in for y, I already have a rho sine phi, so they'll get squared, and I'll have a cosine theta sine theta. So I'm going to get plus 2 rho squared sine squared phi sine theta cosine theta. So we got to be careful with our phi's and thetas, but it looks like these completely annihilate each other which means we did all that work for nothing. Now as a side note here, you might be curious about that. Uh, the fact that the partial derivative of f with respect to theta is zero should indicate to you that f then itself doesn't depend on theta at all. And so something you can do in the privacy of your own home is to actually you know, write f, so substitute, and get f as a function of rho, phi, and theta. And when you make these substitutions, you'll see what happens to the theta. 
but theta is going to get Pythagorean away, uh, which then is going to verify that. But I'll leave that to you. So anyway, that'll do it for number one. Okay, number two, we're given this crazy zany equation here, and we're told that it, it implicitly describes z as a function of x and y. We'll just take their word for it. They want us to find, then, the partial derivative of z with respect to x in terms of x, y, and or z. So this is a consequence of the chain rule. And so we have the following fact. If f of x, y, z equals 0 describes z as a function of f and y, x and y, then the partial derivative of z, oops, we can write that, with respect to x can be obtained by taking the opposite of the partial derivative of f with respect to x divided by the partial derivative of f with respect to z. So that's the theorem we're going to use. In order to use this theorem, we need to first identify what capital F is. And so to that end, what we need to do is we need to get this into an equation that's set equal to 0. So that's step 1. Get the equation equal to 0. And there's a couple different ways to do that. I'm going to have z cubed y minus z squared xy minus z equals 0. So this will be my function f of x y, z. And what do I need in my ingredients here? I need the partial derivative with respect to x. I need the partial derivative with respect to y. So I'll, or with respect to z, rather, so I'll do that. So what's fx? Uh, no x is here. Ooh, there's an x. No x is there. So take the partial derivative there. I get negative z squared y. What's fz? There's z's all over the place, but that's going to be 3z squared y minus 2xyz minus 1. So what's my final answer? The partial derivative of z with respect to x equals the opposite of fx over fz. So I take the opposite of this, I'm going to, just going to get a positive yz squared over this thing. 3yz squared minus 2xyz, whoops, minus 2xyz minus 1. And so I've snuck, snuck it in here that's your final answer. That'll do it for number two, and that'll do it then for quiz eight.